You're still watching the City of Lagos TV show. And of course, today we're going to be taking a look at a very critical sector, a very strategic agency, of course, which is under the Ministry of Health in Lagos. And we're going to be looking at the strategic relevance of traditional medicine in the city of Lagos with issues surrounding its development, proper anessing of the potentials to improve the health of Lagosians and of course to also add up to the economic development of the state. And so today we're going to be speaking with the chairman of the Lagos State Traditional Medicine Board, Professor Adebukola Adefule Oshitelu. You're welcome, madam. Thank you. To the City of Lagos TV show. This agency is a very critical agency, um, talking about its relevance in the health sector. And of course, comparing traditional and orthodox, it has become a long standing tradition as an African country and for a very unique city like Lagos, looking at the health of Lagosians, exploring the potentials of tradomedical options to give Lagosians a better life. So in line with the themes agenda of Mr. Governor, Mr. Babajude Somulu, to what extent has this agency lived up to expectations of the government and of course Lagosians? Thank you. First of all, I think we need to thank the governor, Mr. Babajide Olushola Sonwolu, for making it possible that traditional medicine is given some relevance. And also, we thank the Honorable Commissioner of Health, Professor Akean Bayome, for his keen interest. They've been participating deeply. 80% of our people, they prefer the natural modes of health care. By the time you see them going to the hospital, Maybe they have tried the natural and uh, it's beyond the natural. What is it? World Health Organization, WHO, also considers it very, very important that the traditional mode of medical you know, sector should be upheld. Till date, what would you say are the major significant achievements of this board under your administration to improve traditional health care delivery in Lagos? The board was um, inaugurated 2020 and since January we came on board. We started with reconciliations because we discovered that most of these practitioners belong to different associations like our people. Everybody is the president. Everybody is the CEO. So we had to reconcile them. We also uh, decided we must regulate them. They must be regulated because we are being guided by the reform law of 2006 and that is bringing them to the knowledge that one, they are relevant to the society, to the community, that they must practice at par with the orthodox. So which means we have to raise the standard, regulate them. Made it quite sure that um, nobody must practice without being licensed. From that, we had to train them. For the first time, all trainings are digital. And for the first time, those hawking on the streets, everybody knows them as alagbo. We call them herbal dispensers. They didn't know it was illegal. We had to, you know, sensitize them to this. They've been brought in now, included in the program. They are now being taught. They have associations that will recommend them to come to the board. They get the form. We do attestation and a sort of interview them. They have two weeks of compulsory mandatory training, after which they are now given certificates. They must never be on the road. Even those using microphone, we've told them it's illegal. Give it six months, I'm sure you'll never see a single one. Because they, they now know that they must wear their coat, they must have 
a place, at least a kiosk where they can sit and they we have we give them a sticker. Should in case anything happens, you can trace back and know who the dispenser is. And um, this is a big achievement for us. We reduced quacker and then with the TBAs we've been able to reduce mortality, mother and child. And um, as part of our achievements, we collaborate with the non-governmental organizations. They try to upgrade them to the orthodox standard in the terms of hygiene, immunizations, and also they make sure that there's a referral system. They, they know their limits. When they see cases going beyond their limits, they must immediately refer. And we've made arrangements with the general hospitals. They never refuse them. So that arrangement is going on very well. And then the traditional bath attendants are also sent to Las Cotec. They spend six weeks there training, and it goes a long way. They become community bath attendants from traditional bath. They now become community bath attendants. They are more equipped, they are more knowledgeable, and they practice, you know, the practice is much, much more upgraded. We've been able to successfully commission the Ekorodu Zonal Office. All the things we have here are also there. We've been to Badagre also, and there's a building there already, which we hope will serve very well as the zonal office. And Ekwe is also already promising us. We impressed Suicide so much through FHI. They even donated a highest bus to us, yes. And this has become very, very useful to us because we now use them for monitoring, tax force and monitoring. The certificates you um, issue to the practitioners, are they just limited within Lagos or they can use it to practice outside Lagos? Uh, one thing I'm sure of Lagos is number one in the whole country. There's no other board doing what we are doing in Lagos right now in Nigeria. And if they're certificated from Lagos, I'm, I'm not sure anybody will oppose them from you know, practicing. We have very educated people now in the class. The mandatory six weeks training. Pharmacists, doctors, professors have been in the class. We have the children of the practitioners, no educated ones now joining so that they are now enlivening the practices of their parents, of their grandfathers, and interested in practicing traditional medicine. When it has to do with traditional medicine, uh, there is also the issue of identifying and ensuring efficacy of these drugs. So is the agency involved in any form of research or making sure that members do thorough research in order to also come up with appropriate dosage or usage of these herbs or the products they produce? Our forefathers and great, great mothers, they know the limits and they have measurements. Recently, we discovered that most of the practitioners are claiming they belong to parents who have been practicing and they've learned from their parents. Now, they identify these leaves. They all know the leaves. They know the efficacy, which we now need to translate into the same standard as the orthodox. But we are praying that the traditional medicine board will be relocated or given a befitting infrastructure, which will have laboratories where we can do our own. We have research groups, but very expensive. And that's why you see that most of their drugs are not, you know, listed by NAVDAC because, you know, and then it takes so long for these products to be really evaluated. And good enough, we met when the COVID was still rampaging and we came up with a mixture. 
that was approved by NAPTAC and also gained Tet Fund grant. It contributed to the lower level or the severity of the of a COVID pandemic. We are hoping with the infrastructure we're going to get with the laboratories, along with the research you know, group and even the practitioners, most of these drugs will be you know, investigated and then we'll be able to standardize them. That say, take two milligrams of this or turn them into cap capsules, into tablets and so on. And then be able to run model clinics where you see people with their health problems. Treatments will be in prescription form. Very soon, we'll be able to make habacopia, not just pharmacopia, habacopia. Chairman, would you tell us, is there any effort the board is making to impress it on the legal state house of assembly to possibly pass a health law that will give you a strong functional standing with the orthodox primary health care or various health projects by the state government in the state? Yes, that's it in place because all the local governments, we have the community health officers there and we have the tax force people that are practitioners, you know, work hand in hand with. That's already going on, especially with the traditional bath attendants. The problem we're having is setting a specific space for them to say, this is orthodox, this is traditional, choose which one you want. That's just the stage we are envisaging. All the specialties you get in the orthodox are also prevalent in the traditional. The thing is, it's faster with the nature and less complication. The only thing is some people, you tell them to take a teaspoon. They say, ah, for you to work faster, they can take a tablespoon. And that is overdose. Too much of everything is bad. There is no discipline in orthodox that you cannot treat also in the traditional. Diabetes, hypertension, bones, um, allergy, skin, cancer. Yes, it's amazing. It's amazing. Brand product packaging is quite essential when you're discussing tradomedical. What is the level of training or awareness you're creating in this angle? so that the product is very attractive to the users. Are you impressing on practitioners? It's part of the mandatory, you know, training. But you have to have a place. We need a good infrastructure. I'm sure most of them would love to, you know, align with the board for their packaging. They know they have to package very well that, you know, it promotes purchase. They are already trained. They are being trained. What are you doing with regards to advocacy and sensitization of Lagosians and stakeholders uh, to actually position tradomedical medicine in Lagos? Lagos State is divided into five zones. And in the last in 2020, 2021, we made sure we went to all the five zones. Ibile, I for Ikorodu, B for Badagri, I for Ikeja, L for Lagos Island, and Leki, and then E for Ekwe. We were able to go through advocacy and sensitization, and um, it's quite impressive that we involve the traditional rulers when we do this. This is to sensitize the practitioners. The ballets and the king are also contributed so much, and this is very encouraging. King Sotobi Ekorodu, he has been very, very, very helpful. The first time we went there, many of the practitioners, those who were not registered, he paid for them. The second time we went last year, he paid for 100 of them. This is really leading by example because he openly told them that none of his subjects must practice without being licensed. 
When you talk about traditional uh, medicine, it's also quite important to look at what are those potentials. To what extent is the board growing medicinal plants in order for proper processing and commercialization? There's a farm at Idena towards uh, Itoke and it's 10 hectare which we have tried so much. We'll be able to supply most of these medicinal plants even to the herbal dispensers. We planted so many. The rain of last year destroyed many of them because that place used to be the rice farm. That it was heavily flooded. So most of them were destroyed, but we have replanted again. And we are hoping that very soon we'll be able to get certain amount to all the Elewe Omos and others who would love to produce them on their own because it's very, very important that we must be able to boast of a farm ourselves, you know, with these medicinal products. What are the future projections, the future plans of this agency? Future plan of this agency is to be recognized, respected, and given the chance to practice side by side with the orthodox practitioners. According to the WHO, we are already having the alternative and the complementary uh, medicine practitioners joining us. The acupuncturists have joined us in full force. Last year, we had uh, an alternative medicine specialist clinic at uh, Adeto Kumbo Ademola Street in Victoria Island. We also had another one commissioned at uh, Omole area of Lagos State. And right now, we're having the National Council of Physicians and in Natural Medicine. We are coordinating with them so that everybody comes under the umbrella of TCAM, traditional complementary and alternative medicine, as the WHO has defined and it's been practiced in other countries already established, like China and uh, India. So what's your final word to practitioners, stakeholders, and of course to Lagosians? Lagosians be expectant that we are working very hard to make sure you get the best of traditional medicine practices in Lagos. For the practitioners, we expect the higher standard from them. Many of them who are not registered are going to be captured. Those who have already been captured should maintain that high standard that uh, they have obtained. And then the general uh, people, there's nothing fetish when it comes to traditional medicine. There is nothing fetish. Most of the products that are in the orthodox, you know, the pharmaceutical world, were derived from plant source. If you don't value what you have, nobody will value it. I make bold to say that traditional medicine has helped me maintain my health to this stage. My eyes, I started wearing glasses at the age of 15. Now I read and write without glasses. I had astigmatism, I had, you know, myopia, they're corrected. My lens opacities have been cleared. My glaucoma is controlled. My ulcer healed, and so many like that. And I have many men now with prostatic enlargement that get relief within a week of management. You have them in specialties like that. There's nothing the nature cannot do except surgery. I want to thank you very much, Professor Adebu Kuala Adefule Oshitelu, Chairman, Lagos State Traditional Medicine Board. Thank you for coming on the program. Thank you very much for having me. It's been quite fantastic um, listening to you. I want to wish you all the best. So, Lagosians, you've heard from the Chairman of the Lagos State Traditional Medicine Board telling us the giant strides of the board to make significant initiatives impact in developing healthcare services through the practitioners to complement efforts in orthodox medicine. And so the City of Lagos TV show will continue in a moment.